Hello all, so in this tutorial we will have our first practical example of partial reconfiguration. So let me try to explain what I am trying to do. So this system, this we have seen before. This is the system developed in our first tutorial for uh, interfacing with VGA. Okay? So what this system was doing, uh, it was sending some image to our IP. So we have an IP called this image process IP. And if you remember, we were doing some kind of convolution operation inside this IP uh, for, for edge detection. And the output of that convolution, we were sending back to our system memory through our DMA controller. And from the system memory, uh, that was being displayed on the monitor using our VDMA IP and uh, Axie 4 to video out IP. Okay, So this is what we did. Now, I'm... Um, I'm trying to apply partial reconfiguration here. So if you remember our image processing IP, it was doing some kind of a convolution and we have already seen by changing uh, the kernel used for convolution, you can get different kind of effects. Okay, So we actually saw a blurring operation, averaging operation, which will make our image looks, looks like blurred. We have already seen the Sobel operation which will detect the edges in our image. And there are other kind of kernels also. For example, we have a kernel for sharpening. So my aim is to do some partial reconfiguration. That means change only the portion of this IP, which is actually doing that convolution. Otherwise, every other part uh, remains same. All of them, they have the line buffer, they have the output buffer. There is no change to any of them. Only if you can change that uh, kernel part, that convolution part, you will be able to uh, have different kind of effects. Okay. So our aim is at runtime, I should be able to change the part which is doing the convolution operation. Uh, if you want to have different kind of image operations and if you are not using partial reconfiguration, what you'll need is you'll need multiple image processing IP here and each of them doing a specific operation, okay? specific uh, convolution with a specific kernel. But if I use uh, partial reconfiguration, it is possible to have a single IP here, but at runtime, I will change the logic which does the uh, convolution operation so that will save a lot of area actually a lot of resources uh, when i go for design okay uh, so that's what we are trying to achieve so first step we have to do is we need to build some proper directory structure because we'll be using many files here and we'll be using multiple scripts also possibly so it's good to have a good directory structure so what i have done is okay this is my project folder partial reconfiguration so i have already copied the block design from my previous project to here and when you are copying the block design you just have to copy the project file dot xpr file and dot sources file these are temporary files generated by uh, vivado you can delete them okay so we have our project and we have our sources folder and if you are starting fresh uh, you can make the block design uh, actually by starting a fresh project also. Since we already have the block design, I just copy it here. Then I made many folders here. So I have a folder for storing the IP core. I will explain you why that is needed because we will store our image process IP there. And I have another folder where I will be storing all the netlists. Okay? So within that, I have a folder for storing the netlist for uh, different kind of kernels. So I have a folder for storing blur kernel, Sobel kernel, stat sharpen kernel, different kind of kernel. Then I have a folder for storing the netlist for the static region, the region which is not going to change at runtime. So okay, so the entire system, other than that convolution part, it won't be changing during runtime. So this folder will store that netlist. Currently, all of them are empty. So as we go along, we will fill them. Then I have folders for storing the netlist for different configuration. Now, in this case, my aim is to have three configuration. Okay, each configuration will represent a particular image processing operation. So if I say like configuration one will represent, let's say, a Sobel operation. 
configuration 2 it will represent blur operation averaging configuration 3 will be used for sharpen so in this case configuration really doesn't make much sense because configuration makes uh, much sense when you have more than one partially reconfigurable module but in this simple example we are going to take only one module which can be partially reconfigured so since i have uh, three different versions of that module i will just have three configurations fine so we have this folder for that and we have another folder for storing the bitstream again now they are all empty as i said we will have three configurations so i have three folders here and later each one of them they will have a complete bitstream which can be used for programming the entire chip and they will also have partial bitstream which can be used for changing only the partially reconfigurable module okay so that's where we have them okay that's it so first step i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the image processing ip this ip uh, to my local folder here because we need to make some slight modification to that IP. So I'm going to my IP code directory and I'm taking my image processing IP from there and let me put it here. Okay, so let's open it, that project. Okay, so this is our image processing IP if you, if you remember. So we had a lot of line buffers inside that for line buffer then some logic for controlling line buffer then we had this module the convolution which was actually doing the convolution operation and this is the kernel we use for uh, Sobel operation we have two kernels here now as I mentioned before uh, as far as uh, image processing is concerned in our example the entire circuits remains the same except this portion which does the convolution okay if you change this kernel okay the behavior changes so i don't have to modify any other portion of the circuit during runtime other than this module this kernel dot v so i am going to use this module as my partially reconfigurable module so remember what was it this one uh, where is the terminology okay reconfigurable module okay a module Target for targeted for runtime reconfiguration so our reconfigurable module in this example is this kern which is sitting inside this larger module image process dot top but you don't have to reconfigure the entire image process dot top because only this part is changing so we want to keep it as small as possible the region which under, undergoes uh, partial reconfiguration so what modification you need to do here because if you go and check uh, the steps in vivado there's a condition written here so you have to synthesize your static region or static part of your circuit by keeping the reconfigurable modules as black boxes okay so black box is a term used by vivado by silinx uh, the module which does not contain any logic inside so you will just have the name of the module and the declaration of the power ports but there won't be any logic inside the module that's when we call it as a black box uh, you may see that warning sometimes in vivado also when you build some circuit that usually comes when vivado it optimizes your entire circuits and there is no logic inside your circuit in that case yeah black boxes they are problematic in normal flow but in PR flow we want to keep every reconfigurable module as black box when you synthesize the static region or static part of the circuit so what we need to do is we need to delete this part so that it becomes a black box so we will just keep it like that that's why i copied this ip separately i don't want to modify the original ip okay so you can either delete it and keep it like that then things are very clear or you can use some attributes also so the attribute for that is synthesis translate of although it's an attribute it is written as a comment but vivado will catch it so if you put this synthesis translate off and synthesis translate on 
anything between these two attributes will be ignored for synthesis okay so this is uh, as good as you have commented out everything in between these two lines so this can be also used that is another way or you have an attribute called black box which you can use wherever that module is instantiated so we have instantiated here so here we can put a uh, attribute like uh, black box like this is an attribute something like this so any of them will work okay so let's just comment things out so that there is no confusion uh, regarding whether any logic is present inside this module also so i am just removing it now it has become a box okay so now let's come back here to our block design and uh, i am changing the path to my ip so that he is going to look at this new ip the one i modified previously the path was different so i'll go to ip repository and i will add this as my repository so he detected that ip image process okay okay so he detected something changed report ip status and you need to choose update selected so that he updates it okay so that's done okay so that's about the initial part so let's look at the step the step is synthesize the static region by keeping all the reconfigured modules as black boxes and generate the netlist that is the first step okay so we have kept the reconfigurable module as black box so let's go ahead and uh, generate the netlist for the static region that means this entire circuit except that convert part because it's committed out so you just go ahead and click run synthesis here okay so as i mentioned before part of pr flow is gui based part of it will be will be using uh, tickle commands silings they have tried to bring more gui uh, by adding some pr wizard here partially reconfigured with wizard so if you go to tools there's an option like partial reconfiguration wizard but it really doesn't work if you are uh, doing block based design and uh, I guess it is better to go with the old flow, which is a mix of both uh, GUI as well as Tickle. Okay, so now he is uh, building it. And uh, if you go to design runs, you can see this thing here, out of context module run. Okay, so this is what I was mentioning. So for every IP in your system, in normal flow also, what he does is he synthesizes each of them separately. Okay, each of them separately and he creates netlist for each of them separately and finally he will combine all those netlists together to build your entire system and while he is synthesizing each of them there shouldn't be input output buffer with any of them okay so they will be all running using so called out of context synthesis which we mentioned in the previous tutorial so he will synthesize our ip also he will build everything except that convolution part because uh, it's a black box okay so now the synthesis step is over we can open the synthesize netlist so this is a dcp file the one he generated so if you go to our project folder and if you go under runs if you go under synth you will be able to see that file this one system wrapper.dcp this is the netlist for the static part of your project and also you can see the netlist for individual ip cores here okay each folder represents one ip core and you can see the individual netlist for each ip core okay so when we open the netlist here you will see like vivado he is giving a warning he is saying like could not resolve not non primitive black box cell system image process can instantiate as a can okay so he is basically saying he couldn't find the netlist for conv convo module and it is a black box so if you have a black box in your design 
unless you replace that black box with some appropriate netlist you won't be able to go for implementation okay so we'll come back to that so let's look at the steps here synthesize the static region by keeping all recon fill module as black boxes and generate the netlist that we already did we already have the netlist here as i showed you in the synth folder now maybe for future we want to keep those netlists separately that is possible so we already have a folder here called static so let's copy that netlist to this folder and that we are going to do using tickle command you can actually go and copy paste it but uh, now we will start using tickle so the command for writing a netlist is called write checkpoint and you just say like where he should write it. Okay. So we want to store it in netlist static. Let's call and you need to give the name for the DCP file. Okay, so let's call it static or DCP. Just like that. Okay, so now he is saving our netlist here so you can see like static.dcp so dcp this is a proprietary netlist format only vivado can uh, read and process it it's not open source like our ad format okay this is the new silings netlist so it has netlist information as well as more information uh, like uh, the constraint file information that is also actually embedded into this netlist anyway so first step is done next step is we need to synthesize each reconfigured module separately in out of context and generate the netlist for each of them so as far as we are concerned we have only one reconfigured module which is kun so if you go to the hierarchy here under netlist under image processing you can see like here our kun is it is in black color some kind of because it's a black box and there is no option to expand it any other module if you expand uh, he will basically show you what are the nets what are the wires used inside those modules and what are the resources used inside that you can see like lat3 lat4 lat5 d flip flop things like that but this guy has nothing because he's a black box he has no uh, logic inside so we need to build netlist for this module okay so that's what we are going to do next so here let me add one more thing here about the modes so as i mentioned in previous tutorial modes are mutually exclusive implementation of a reconfigurable module so our reconfigurable module is called kun i am planning to have three modes for it that is why we have kept three folders here blur sobel and sharpen so if i go into that folder so i have already copy pasted the source code there all of them will have a module with the same name okay their name should be the same even the file names are different the module name should be same all of them have the name kun you can see and all their interfaces should match that means the input output should match in names as well as direction in in every respect so you'll see like they're all matching what is different is what is happening inside the module okay for example in case of sobel you can see like we have two kernels and we are, we are doing the edge detection here in case of sharpen we have a different kind of kernel here and we are uh, making the image more sharp and under blur this is the kernel we are using it was all one actually and we are finding the average we are smoothening things okay so the logics are different but they are all called the kernel module so kernel module is our reconfigured module and uh, sobel sharpen and blur these are the three different modes of that same module so you need to generate netlist for each one of them and uh, save it in this corresponding folder now that again you can do from uh, command line if you use vivado command line option we may do later this time let me use gui itself so i will start a new project 
and I will go to one of the folders here. Let's say netlist folder and blur. Okay, select and let's call it. Uh, let's call it blur itself because it has blur. And we have the source code already in blur, so let me add it here and finish. Now we'll keep the previous project open. Okay, so our module is here. Now we need to generate netlist for this module. Now if you just go and click run synthesize here, he will generate netlist, but it won't be out of context. Okay, he will insert buffers here at the input and output of that netlist. So we already discussed like uh, that is problematic. So we cannot directly click run from here. Instead, we have to run uh, out of context. So if it is a top module, you can see actually, if you right click here, there is an option like set as out of context for synthesis. That is not getting highlighted. Again, we were, uh, only for certain modules, he will highlight this option. So if this high option is highlighted, we could have just checked it and we could have run it. But since it is not highlighted, you cannot run it using GUI. We have to run it using our tickle script. And it's very easy. You can type like synth design, then mode, out of context then top name of the top module cut that's it so now he is actually running synthesis in the background okay so he finished uh, running synthesis and uh, if you go to that folder blur uh, you won't find that dcp file here so that dcp files comes into dot runs folder automatically only if you are running through GUI. If you are running through tickle script, it won't be automatically saved. You have to explicitly ask to save it. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So again, same command. You can say, not this project, this project. You can say write checkpoint followed by the name of the uh, netlist file if you want to save it as okay so we have again under netlist and this is blur okay so let's uh, call it itself because in the original project the black box name is kun okay? so we need to use the same name kun dot dcp and now if i come yeah this is the netlist so you have to do the same step for other two modules also uh, so that i will do in the background okay so you need to generate netlist for sharpen as well as sobel and save their netlist in these two folders and the name should be same again conv.dcp okay so now i have completed generating netlist for all my modes so i have dcp here for sharpen DCP here for blur and DCP here for sober. Okay, so that step is also done. Now let's look at the next step. Next up is perform floor planning for each reconfigurable region. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so come here. This is our reconfigure module, so we need to do the floor planning. So basically, we need to tell Vivado physically where in this chip this uh, module should be implemented. So when you are opening it, if this window is not coming uh, in the drop down, you need to check this floor planning. Okay, instead of that, if it is IO planning, you might be seeing this one. So you need to change to floor planning. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to right click and choose floor planning under that you choose draw p block okay partition block that's what silence they call it and now you will be able to draw rectangles in the fabric and that will represent the logical partition and again you notice here see fj is divided into multiple rows here 
each one is a clock region so you can put it any clock region but the height of that region should be one clock region even if you draw it as less than one clock region height uh, vivado it will internally convert it into one clock region high uh, another thing you need to make sure is region that you select should contain enough resources to implement the different mode okay uh, whichever mode takes the largest number of resources it should have those many resources available in the in the region that you choose here so i guess we need uh, block ramps as well as dsp since we have multiplication and all so let's choose a region uh, somewhere here so we have vram here we have clbs here everywhere and we have dsp here so we can choose somewhere here somewhere here or somewhere here also fine okay at this point we are not worried much okay, so finally let me choose somewhere here so i am going to just drag and Oh, okay and he will ask you which all regions should be included in the region so that you can reconfigure them so you can uncheck it if you don't want to include some particular kind of resource but we need all of them so just check all of them and say okay now this is slightly extended to next clock region that means he will include that region also so we don't want that to happen so make sure it is on the border here as well as here so once you do it you will see a blue tick here that means floor planning is done and now you need to do a few things so when you choose this region here you can see the p block properties window where he will show all the properties of this region so he will basically tell you how many lights are there inside this region how many flip flops are there how many block ramps are there and how many dsps are there this v ram 18 and 36 they are physically uh, same thing okay and 18 will be always double of uh, 36 but physically it's only one set of block ram okay so that is one thing what you need to do is you need to go under properties and this is only when you are doing PR okay and you need to check this option reset after reconfiguration as well as snapping mode you need to turn it on okay again why snapping mode again require a lot of explanation at some point I will again explain it because that need to know again uh, much more low level architecture details of uh, signing self feature some details about switch boxes so there is a constraint on how wide each region can be also okay so even if I say like it should be only this much wide uh, Vivado might automatically extend it by one more CLB column uh, due to again some internal architecture details at this point yeah you don't want to know it okay so anyway check these two options and you'll see like whenever you are doing something uh, he is automatically showing the corresponding command here okay yeah so actually everything is happening through tickle commands so if you want you can save these commands to some file so that later point of view you don't have to do any of this manually you can just run the script and everything happens just like that okay so do it once you are done this once you have done floor planning we have only one PR, re PR region we have only one reconfigure module so you have to do it only once and go ahead and save it and this information will be again saved in a constraint file so we already have a constraint file which is basically saying the pin assignment for our vg and all uh, you can either save it in the same xdc file same constraint or let's save it in a different constraint okay so let's call it like er con constraint not xdc okay so he will save this information in another file so if you wish you can go and open and see what he actually saved he saved the information about your pr region so he is basically saving the bottom left corner coordinate as well as top right uh, coordinates of that rectangle that we just drew and that is enough to represent 
a rectangle that's what you are seeing here and the two properties that we set reset after reconfiguration a snapping board that information is also saved here okay so flow planning is done so next step Combine the netlist for static region and reconfigure module for generating one valid configuration. Okay. So uh, anyway, since we are already in a project, we already have the static netlist open here. Okay. If you are opening Vivado freshly and uh, you want to do this, what you can do is you can reuse this netlist. This is the netlist of the static region which we just saved after synthesis you can use this netlist but since we are already in a project we already synthesized everything using the same project the netlist is already here okay and that netlist is what you are seeing here so you don't have to explicitly open the netlist of the static module static region that is already available you need to bring the netlist of one of the netlists of the reconfigure module and you need to stitch that netlist with the netlist of the static region and you need to generate one configuration so that's what we are going to do okay so for that you need to use this command read checkpoint okay this is the command for reading a netlist and combining it with another uh, netlist read checkpoint followed by cell okay cell uh, silinx instead of calling things as modules they call everything as cell so you're basically saying like i want to read an at list and uh, insert it to a black box so you need to tell which black box which module uh, should be using this particular net list okay. so for that again you need to give the entire hierarchy of that module so get cells followed by the hierarchy so this is the topmost module in that list system underscore i under that image process underscore zero under that inst under that cut okay so this is the cell it should be using the netlist that we are going to read and where is the netlist let's use uh, yeah, you can use one of the netlist okay so let's use um, our sobel okay, so under netlist under sobel we already have the netlist on the dc that is the netlist okay so he is now reading that netlist and he combined it this netlist if something goes wrong he will give like error he can't come by if if the module names are not matching or the interface is not matching or if the hierarchy that you gave here is wrong all of them will create errors so you need to do very carefully and now you can see previously that black it was black now it is gone because he combined that uh, netlist with this netlist and now you can expand and you can see like uh, it is no longer a black box it has wires and it has also resources okay so that's what you did after this we need to do one thing which is not in the slide you need to tell vivado this is a partially reconfigured module explicitly if you don't say it uh, he will run everything only thing is he will not give you the partially reconfigured bitstream the bitstream which can be used for changing only this region that he is not going to generate okay for generating that you should explicitly say this is partially reconfigured system and that is when he is going to check whether you have license for doing pr or not okay so you click this module and go to properties and he will show all the properties of this module and by default that option is not there you need to add properties under that there will be so called hd properties which stands for hierarchical design properties and that's what we need okay let's type hd here so there is this option hd not reconfigurable this is basically telling vivado 
this is a reconfigurable module so you need to check it okay now that option is checked and you need to explicitly check it also it comes here you need to check it and once that is done again we need to save this information and okay that information will be again saved in the same xdc file you can see it so that step is also done now place and root this particular configuration again uh, this is a configuration uh, because we have only one module so this makes a configuration also so if you wish you can save this new netlist so this is a new netlist actually static netlist combined with this first uh, mode okay so let's save this netlist also maybe in future useful so let's do write okay check point and we want to save it under netlist and since we are doing it from sobel oh okay this makes first configuration so let's say like config one let's call it config one dot pc so we saved the netlist for config one this step is optional but yeah good to have it Maybe in future tutorial it will be clear why it is good to have it. Okay, so once this is done, you just uh, place on root. So Vivado, there are three commands for doing it. Opt design for optimization, place design for placement, and route design. You can type one by one, or you can uh, type all of them together in some text file and just copy paste it. So opt design, place design, and route design. These are the commands for this and route. You can type one by one also here. Or you can do all of them in one shot. Okay, so he has completed this and route. So now if you zoom in, uh, you can see he has placed and routed everything. You can see uh, there are resources inside our PRR region used by our convolution module and these are all parts of our static region and you will see some uh, white boxes here they are actually called partition pins again those who need details uh, you can go ahead and read the partial reconfiguration user manual from Xilinx at this point uh, they are not really interesting for us but maybe for uh, people who are doing research and all, okay, it might be useful. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's save this netlist also because this netlist is the paste and routed netlist for our configuration one. Okay, so let's go ahead and again do a checkpoint netlist config one and let's call it config one route.cp because it's after placement and route okay so that is also done place and route configuration now play save the place and route netlist for configuration we have already done next remove the reconfigure module portion from this netlist and we will get the place and route at static portion why it is needed <clears throat> because now we have uh, placed on router one of the modes along with the static region next we want to place on route the static region along with the next mode of the current module but the thing to remember there is when you do the next round of place on route placement and route of the static module should not change it should remain uh, same as the placement and routing for this particular configuration if the placement and routing for the static region changes when you do it next time uh, it will be problematic um, because the connection between the static region and the reconfigured region they won't be constant so that will create issues your things won't work okay so that's why we have to make sure the placement and routing of the static region 
doesn't change across all the configuration across all the implementation so what we'll do is from this place down router design we will remove the portion corresponding to this reconfigure region and we will save the netlist so the command to do that is following so we will say update design and you need to tell the the particular netlist which you want to remove so we already have that hierarchy here okay so let me say update design cell um, our current module as black box black box okay now if you go to our netlist again here and check our current it is back to black box okay that module has been removed but the static region we have completely placed on routed it so we need to save this place on routed static uh, region also after removing our module and converting it into back to black box we need to tell vivado uh, i need to preserve the placement and routing of the static region forever for that we need to say something like this we need to say lock design level routing you are saying like always preserve the placement and routing of my design so you'll see like now the colors have changed to orange that means these things are part of static module static region and their position will not be changing when you run placement and routing next time it is preserved so we need to save this netlist also so let me say like right checkpoint netlist static static routing.tcp so this netlist i am going to save in my static folder So placement uh, routing is coming after placement so it's enough to say like uh, save routing that automatically means save the placement also so we have that dcp saved here okay so next step is now it is a uh, cyclic okay in a loop what you have to do is you have to read the next mode of the module combine with our static netlist do placement routing generate the netlist again convert it into black box again read the next mode again do placement and routing until you get the placed uh, placement and routing for all the configuration okay so same as before so we'll say like read checkpoint and instead of sobel this time let's take uh, sharpen and we already have the dcp there Take it. so he combined that with our static module and just go ahead and do opt place and route again okay that is also done so again save an at least checkpoint so this time This is our config two. So let's say like config two router router dot tcp. Repeat. Convert it into black box again. Create the next mode. Combine it and convert next. Again, save the netlist for config 3. We have config 3, config 3 router.cp. 
okay so we have completed this step also now only the final step is remaining so you need to uh, generate the complete bitstream and partial bitstream for each configuration so for generating bitstream uh, we need the placed and routed dcp files we already have one dcp file here he already have it in his memory so we can directly use it so we can just say byte stream that is the command and where that bitstream should be saved this this netlist is already open this config3 router.tcp that's why we are directly able to use it otherwise we'll have to issue a open checkpoint command before writing the bitstream that we will see next okay so since it is already in the memory of vivado i can just say write bitstream and where it should be saved so we have bitstream folder and let's say uh, config3 and let me call it config3.bit so config3.bit is the name of the full bitstream which will re reconfigure the entire fpga including this region and the partial bitstream he will automatically generate uh, because you have set the hd command for reconfiguration and since i already have the license for doing it so the name of that bitstream will be a combination of the name of uh, the full bitstream that you gave config one and the name of this region and the name of your reconfigure module so he will combine all three names uh, to build a partial bitstream. We will see it soon. So you can see the name here config3 underscore p block, that is the name of the region, underscore con, that is the name of the uh, module, reconfigure module, underscore partial to represent the partial bitstream. So if you go to our bitstream folder under config3, now you can see two files. This is the full bitstream, which is around 4 MB. This is the partial bitstream, which is only about 465 KB because that is used for reconfiguring only this region. Now we need to generate bitstream for other two configurations also. So for that first we need to read the place and routed uh, checkpoint. So we need to say open checkpoint and we have them under okay list config one config one router dot tcp so we want to open that netlist and we can now ask to generate the string so this is config one and config one dot now once he is done with this we will generate it for config also so in the gui uh, you are only running one bit gen write bitstream but if i'm using command line i can run all three of them in parallel because uh, bitstream generation is independent of each other right so if you have at least you can just generate the bitstream so the things will be faster if we do it through scripts through command line instead of gui maybe later we'll do it okay so that's also done so finally we can do for config two also so open config two at least and write the string for config okay so that's also done so this completes the entire hardware design we have complete bit stream and the partial bit stream for all three configuration and here also you will notice the size of the partial bitstream they are all same 465 because they are all implemented in the same region so the size of this bitstream is directly proportional to the reconfigurable area the larger the area the larger will be your partial bitstreams also that means the more will be the time for uh, reconfiguration so we need to keep the region as small as possible but uh, get our things done.